Get your Bible tonight and lift your word up towards heaven tonight. So I thank God tonight for the word of God. Tonight, I'll be taught the uncompromised, the unchanging, the infallible, indestructible seed of the living word. I am what the word says I am. I can do what the word says I can do. I can have what the word says I can have. For well, my Bible is God's word speaking to me. And look to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, the Bible is God's word speaking to you. So smile real big and read your Bible every day. Way that we're around. Hug two or three people before you sit down tonight. Go ahead and be real friendly. Have you hugged somebody you hadn't hugged today? Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Hallelujah. We're going to pick back up on the subject that uh, I started teaching here uh, two weeks ago tonight. Of course, uh, Jason ministered last Wednesday evening for me. did a great job on the subject of faith. And uh, we appreciate that so very much. But tonight we're going to pick back up on the subject, understanding your new identity. Understanding your new identity. And the reason I named it that way, because there are a lot of people that are Christians, have been born again, that does not understand their new relationship or their new identity with the Lord Jesus Christ. Because if you did, then we would not have uh, the troubles that we've been having because once you understand your identity, you can take your position and your authority and put the enemy in his place. And whatever test or trial you face in life, you will not lose your identity. There are so many people down because they go through things, uh, it's easy for them to lose their identity because they have not been established in understanding the new creation. Now we see here in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, in verse 17, it says, Therefore, if anyone or any person is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I am a new creation. That's why Paul said what he did in Galatians 2.20. He says, it's no longer I that live, but the life that I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God. He understood that because he understood his identity. He understood he was not there when Jesus died on the cross. In the natural, but he was there in the spirit, just like you and I. We was engrafted in him. When he was on that cross, he took us into him because we had to, he didn't, he didn't have any sins. We had the sins. He was taking on our sins. So we have to identify for what he did for you and I. Not only in our sins, uh, but in our, our, our sickness and disease. And thank God we have been redeemed from the curse of the law. I've been redeemed. I've been set free from the curse. I identify with my freedom. I don't identify with sickness or disease or poverty. I can't identify with that. That's not a part of my life. I've been redeemed from that. So when children of God get that revelation, understanding their redemption through Christ, through the blood of Jesus, they'll be able to have more victory than they've ever had before, understanding that joy of the Lord is your strength, and you can rejoice every single day, and you will not let things begin to hinder you. Amen. Amen. I was uh, I was thinking today and meditating on some things concerning this message tonight. And I remember back, uh, I think around February, I think, is when the Oscars always comes on. Uh, who gets the Oscars, you know, for the greatest, uh, best actor for the year, actress for the year. And before that takes place... Uh, uh, we always kind of enjoy the previews before when they're coming down the red carpet and they get interviewed. And, and uh, you know, when they're interviewed by these uh, uh, um, uh, reporters, yeah, reporters, commentaries. And so when they were interviewed there, first thing they asked them is, who are you wearing? They asked them, who are you wearing? The ladies, I mean, they're dyked out, and the guys are dyked out, and, and Versace, some of them say Versace, different ones, you know. And I mean, they are dyked out in the best, most expensive dress that can be made. Thousands of dollars for that one night to be able to get on that red carpet, walk down that red carpet so someone can ask you, 
who are you wearing? <laughs> now, I'm going to ask you tonight, you're not walking down a red carpet, but we have through the blood of Jesus. Amen. Who are you wearing? Amen. Who are you wearing? I'm wearing Jesus. I'm wearing the new creation tonight. I put on the whole armor of God. Amen. I wear, I wear Jesus. And so when somebody next time asks you, who are you wearing? Say, I'm wearing Jesus. Amen. Thank God for the word. Amen. And so we need to get that revelation, that identification of understanding our position in Christ. I have been positioned in him through the death, the burial, and the resurrection. So I identify with him. We cannot identify or allow ourselves to identify with the challenges that we go through. We all go through different kinds of challenges. We all are tested and tried in one way or another. But when those tests and trials come, we got to be so established in our identity that we will not be moved or be taken away from who we really are in Christ. So that enemy, the enemy is wanting to take you away from who you really are and your identity with who you really are. So if he can take you away from your identity, then he can start defeating you. So you got to stand when you've done all. Stand on that word of God. Stand on your new identity in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so there are a lot of people that have not got their minds renewed to the truth. Of course, you know, Romans 12, 2 says this. Be not conformed or molded or shaped. Be not conformed like the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Getting our minds renewed to the truth of God's word. Now, if we don't apply ourselves in that word then we will be defeated. You cannot be defeated unless you are spiritually depleted. You cannot be defeated unless you are spiritually depleted. And so in understanding your place in Christ, you've got to feed on that word and get full and stay full of the word of God, stay dressed up in him at all times and stay spiritually strong so when you are attacked, uh, you won't get defeated because you're not depleted. Yes. Amen. You, you, you're full of the Holy Ghost. Uh, uh, again, Ephesians 5, 18 says, Be not drunk with wine, but be full. Be full of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Full of the power of God. Yes. Full of the revelation of who you are in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. He says here in verse 17 again, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ. He is a new creation. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. Now, all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. We all have a ministry. We talked about that last time. We all have a ministry of reconciling and bringing other people into the kingdom of God. That's our ministry. Somebody said, well, I want a ministry. Well, everybody has one. When you become born again, then you are uh, in a position as a minister of teaching and sharing the good news, the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you listening to me tonight? In verse 19, that is that God was in Christ. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing or reckoning uh, the world to himself, to their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now, verse 20 says, Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. We represent Christ. And we want to be sure we are always dressed up in Christ. I am in him. I'm dressed up. I'm always uh, understanding that wherever I go, whatever I do, I'm representing him. I'm representing the kingdom of God. So how are we representing the kingdom of God? In our position, we need to understand that what we say and how we act is a reflection on the kingdom. Amen. Is a reflection on the kingdom of God. So as a child of God, as a Christian, I want to make sure that I say the right things and not being negative or critical because as a child of God, we do not need to be critical. Amen. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Yeah. We need to be positive. I'm representing the kingdom because the kingdom of God lives on the inside of me. So wherever I'm at, you know, it's easy sometimes, uh, especially this time of year, uh, people out shopping and, and the stores get more 
crowded and, and, and people are more busy and, and, and they don't have the help that they should have in some of these stores and you waiting and waiting and waiting to get waited on uh, to ask the question or uh, to buy something and the lines are long and, and it's easy sometimes that you get frustrated. Let me run it by you again. <laughs> and so when we have those moments of wanting to get frustrated and begin to, to show our frustration and, and, and just make a, an idiot of ourselves. Because I'm going to tell you something, wherever you go, that somebody is going to know you. Somebody is going to recognize you. And as the moment you open your mouth and you say something you shouldn't say, you may hear, hear this. Aren't, don't you go to Victor Life Church? <laughs> Don't you go to Victor Life Church? Huh? Hello? It happens all the time. I'll run into people that say, matter of fact, just yesterday afternoon, we was over at BJ's before we uh, went home. We stopped over just for a minute to get some things and, and went checking out there. And the guy got my receipt. You know how they, 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 they step your receipt there and check your stuff and everything? He looked up and said, You're my pastor. <laughs> I said, Praise God. Give me a hug. And I went out to the store and said, honey, who is that? <laughs> but his name is Dan. I won't never forget that. His name is Dan now. He said, he comes here. I'm his pastor, praise God. And, and so I'm glad I had a smile on my face. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so it always pays you to be sure that you're walking in your identity of the Lord Jesus Christ wherever you go. Right. Not just during the holidays. But ever, even when you're visiting your family. Now, that's, that, that can be a real challenge sometimes. Visiting your family sometimes. Because see, they know that you say you're a Christian. They know that you go to church. They know that. And if they're not where they should be with God, the enemy will try to use them to get you out of your knowing. Get you out of position. And so you've got to be on guard for that. Amen. Hallelujah. Then he says here in verse 20, now we are ambassadors. We are ambassadors, ambassador uh, in another country, uh, United States ambassador over in England or China or wherever. They are representing the United States. They are ambassadors, called ambassadors. You and I, we are ambassadors and we are representing the kingdom. When we need to be the best representatives we can be. The best representatives we can be. You never want to it's just, you know, let the, let the things of this world begin to creep into the point that you stay ill all the time or frustrated. Now, we all live in a natural body. This is a human body we live in. But remember this, the greater one lives in us than the one that lives in this world. The greater one is the Holy Ghost in us. So we've got to learn to draw from the inside. I've been challenged many times in my life uh, to not be so sweet. Let me put it that way. Hello. And uh, has anybody else been challenged that particular act? Be honest with me. All right. We've all been challenged there. But we've got to recognize who we are, who we represent. I am not my own. I have been bought with a price. Now, this is the temple of the Holy Ghost. 1 Corinthians 3.16 said, we, this is the temple of the Holy Ghost. I'm not my own. I am representing the kingdom. So how are we representing the kingdom? We need to do the best ambassador for the kingdom of God that anybody could be. Amen. Amen. Amen? Now look at this next verse 21. And it says here, well, let's read 20 again. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he, God, now notice here, for he, God, he is God, made him who is Jesus, who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. I have right standing with God. I have been born again. I have been positioned. As Paul says in Ephesians chapter 2, I have been positioned. I am seated at the right-hand side of the Father. Amen. You and I have been seated at the right-hand side of the Father. I've been seated with him. Amen. So in Christ, he says here, for he, God, made him Jesus, who knew no sin, to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. 
Praise God. Thank God on that cross, he did all the suffering, all the pain he went through for us. He was engrafting us into himself, putting us into himself. And when he died, he went to hell. He took us with him. And when he was resurrected, he brought us up with him. So we understand tonight that we've already died. We've already suffered through Christ Jesus. All of our suffering, all of our pain, all of our sickness, all of our poverty has been dealt with. It's been dealt with. And people are still trying to deal with these issues today. If you just get a hold of that word, understanding your new identity, and when things come up, that's been dealt with. We don't have to deal with it. You don't have to wrestle with it. You don't have to fight with it. Fight, don't fight over your finances. Don't fight over your, your body if it gets under attack. Just stand on the word of God and say, look, it's been dealt with. My, my healing has been dealt with. Uh, my money has been dealt with. I've been obedient to the word of God. I've paid my tithes. I've given my offers. All right, I've dealt with it. Amen. And God said it'd come back to me, press down, shaking together, and running over. Amen? Amen? God is a provider. God is a provider. Are you hearing me now? Once you obey God and follow the path he has for you, you'll find he has prearranged things for us just like he did for Abraham when he obeyed God. Remember in Ephesians, if you could do this for me again, on Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, on the Amplified Bible, if you could pull that up for me real quickly, I appreciate that. But he talks about, we talk about every, every service, living the good life. Living the good life. Ephesians 2.10, Amplified Bible says, he has prearranged for you and I. Notice here, we are God's own handiwork. His workmanship cre recreated. Not made over. When we become born again, we were not made over. We were recreated, reestablished in God's word, in God's life. We're in him now. In him we live and move and have our being. We've been established in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Through the Lord Jesus Christ. Recreated in Christ Jesus. Notice it says Christ Jesus. Christ represents the kingdom. Heaven. Jesus represents the earth. Christ Jesus, born anew, that we may do those good works which God predestined, planned beforehand for us, taking paths which he prepared ahead of time, that we should walk. When did he prepare that? On the cross. He prepared everything on the cross so you and I could live a good life in obedience to his word. He has taken paths which he prepared ahead of time that we should walk in them living the good life which he has prearranged and made ready for us to live. Prearranged. Already taken care of. Amen. Hallelujah. I mean, that ought to make anybody shout. Amen. He's already took care of business. Amen. I said, he's already took care of business. If we just hook up with him, just hook up to him. Amen. Trust his word. Believe his word. Amen. Amen. He says here again, prearranged things for you and I. You know, when uh, Abraham went up to take his son, Isaac is a sacrifice in obedience to his word. That son, Isaac, was a miracle. God gave him a miracle, but God asked him to bring him to the mountaintop and offer him as a sacrifice. And so he did it in obedience. He told his son, we're going to the top of the mountain and we're going to uh, present a sacrifice to the father. This young teenage boy, young boy here, he had no idea that he was token, taking wood because he was going to be the sacrifice. But see, God has prearranged some things. And so when he got to the top of the mountain and Abraham prepared uh, the altar there and put the wood on it and everything and uh, he even got to the point of taking his knife out. And when he took his knife out, God spoke to him and says, no, there's a sacrifice over there in the bushes. A ram. A ram. God had already provided the sacrifice before he ever went up to the mountain. All he was wanting from Abraham was obedience. And the Bible also says this, even if God would have allowed Abraham to thrust him, to kill him, he already knew that he could raise him back from the dead. 
Abraham knew this in his heart, that if God would allow him to kill his own son, that it would just be for a moment. Amen. He would raise him right back up from the dead. God always provides. <clears throat> God always has a realm in the thicket for you and I. Amen. Everything we need has already been prearranged, provided for us. we got to learn to get our minds renewed to the truth of God's word to the point that nothing shakes us. I said nothing shakes us. Enemy will try to use fear against you. He'll use your own spouse or he'll use your children or a loved one or, or a friend or a neighbor or a church member. He'll try, every, he'll try everything he can to try to get you into fear. Fear will take you out of faith. But we've got to stay in faith and obedience to his word to identify with who, he, who we are in Christ. I'm identifying with him. God has prearranged everything for us. Hallelujah. It would probably be a good idea sometime we just start working on this area. Get up every morning and say, by God, this day has already been prearranged for me to be blessed. Amen. All you're doing, not only are you confessing that with your mouth, you're hooking up with what God's already said about you. All you're doing is saying what God says about you. We need to say what God says about you. Not what somebody else says about you. Sometimes we have a tendency some, when we hear things that somebody has said about us, we go tell somebody else, well, look what so-and-so said about me. Forget about that. What does, what does Jesus say about you? Amen? See, to understand God's provision for you, you must get a revelation of identification. Uh, provision always comes through obedience. Always comes through obedience. We find that in Isaiah 1, 19. It's one. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Yes. Obedience to God's word. Obedience in, in, in doing what his word says to do. God has qualified us, enabled us, and made us worthy and made us ready. Yes. Let's go to Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. See, God is my provider. He always provides for me. I said he always provides for me. Hallelujah. I'll tell you what, let's look at Colossians 1. Let's look, begin reading with verse 9. For this reason we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will, which is his word. His word. Somebody say, well, what is God's will for my life? His word. His word is his will for your life. With the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Hallelujah. And spiritual understanding. God wants us to understand the mysteries. Christ. Born. A new creation in Christ. Thank God for that mystery. We understand that today. Verse 10 says that you may walk worthy of the Lord. Fully pleasing him. Being fruitful in every good work. And increasing in the knowledge of God. You're pleasing him, fully pleasing him, when you are increasing in the knowledge of God. How do you do that? By meditating and studying the Bible. Amen. Reading the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. I've told you this before, but I, I love what Billy Graham said a while back. He said, if I had to, to go back over again, and, and uh, uh, someone asked him that question, interviewed him, and said, uh, what would you do if you had to go back over again? He said, I'll read the Bible more. I just read the Bible more. I want to get more understanding of who he is. He said, I'm not concerned about getting more sermons. I want to get more knowledge of who he is. It's not about the sermons. It's about the revelation of our identification and understanding our new birth and our identification. Amen? Glory to God. So, you know, I, I love what John Osteen said years ago. He's in heaven today. He said, I, I, don't, I don't prepare sermons. He said, I prepare myself. And that was so powerful to me because back many years ago, in getting started in ministry, I was always concerned about getting the message and believing for the right message. And I still do that. But this time, I just meditate on the word and preparing myself, Amen. praying, putting myself in a position. See, if we do that, come into church, prepare ourselves when we come to church. I'm, I'm coming to church with the right spirit, right attitude. 
I'm believing God for a move of the Holy Ghost. I'm believing God for souls to be saved, miracles and signs and wonders to take place. I'm hooking up with a pastor. Matter of fact, I'm not going to wait to get there to believe. I'm believing before I get there. <laughs> Amen. So when we get here, we can have what we call an explosion. An explosion, hallelujah. Because we are identifying as ambassadors, identifying who Christ is in us. And it's not so much as coming to church and say, Lord, speak to me and give me this word. Speak to me and give me that word. That's well and good in itself. But what, what, what we need to do is to get in the word, get a word for ourselves when we get there. And God will give you something else to go with that. Yeah. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says here in verse 11, strengthen with all might, according to his glorious power, for all patience, long-suffering, and everybody say joy. 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 Giving thanks, in verse 12, to the Father who has qualified us, who's qualified. I'm, I have been pre-qualified. You know, when you go to buy a home or a car, you know, you've you got to get qualified. you got to get qualified. We need to understand, I have already been pre-qualified for heaven. Not only have I been pre-qualified for, for heaven through my new birth, I've already been qualified, pre-qualified for his blessings. I've already been pre-qualified. When I'm in obedience to his word, I've already qualified for prosperity, for healings and miracles and signs. I've already been qualified. I'm not trying to get qualified. See, people, the body of Christ is still trying to get good enough or to qualify to receive from God. And so we go through these little rituals. Uh, Lord, you know, I just pray, forgive me for that. Forgive me for that. I got this need here, Lord. And I just got to know, already be in position where you are, know that you have been pre-qualified. It's going to be so easy to walk in the fullness of God's word when we understand we have been pre-qualified. He says here in verse 12 again, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us. Now notice the word has, past tense. Past tense. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom, hello, into the kingdom of his son of his love. The word conveyed means I've been transferred. I've been transferred already. To the kingdom of God. All I'm waiting for is to hear the trump blow, hear the trumpet blow, or, you know, uh, if we live long enough, it, we, will, we will die. We will die. Either way, I know where I'm going. I know where I'm going. I'm not going to be sitting around wondering if there is a God or, or if, if God really is who he says he is. I know who God is. I'm not allowing the world system dictate my relationship with my father. Amen. Because I've already established myself in his word, and I understand that I know who I am in Christ. I'm identifying with it. I don't identify with the problems of the world. Amen? I identify with Christ because I've been qualified. I've been qualified and transferred us to the kingdom of his son and his love in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sin Amen. hallelujah he is he is the image of the invisible god the firstborn over all creation for by him all things are created that we are in heaven and that are on the earth visible invisible whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things are created through him and for him. And he is before all things. In him all things consist. He is the head of the body, the church, who is beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things we have the preeminence. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. For verse 19 says, For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell, and by him to reconcile all things to himself. By him, whether things on the earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of the cross. We have peace. I already have peace. I'm not trying to get peace. I already have peace through the blood of the cross. Man, he, when he went to the cross, he took care of everything. 
I mean, when Jesus went to the cross, he took care of all of our needs, took care of all of our situations. Can you say amen on that tonight? And verse 21 says, And you who once were alienated, enemies in your what? Mind by wicked works, yet now he has reconciled in the body of his flesh through death. In the body of his death through flesh. Through his death. In the body of his flesh through death. To present you holy and blameless and above all reproach in his sight. We are holy. We are holy in him. We are blameless. We are blameless. Glory to God. We should not be condemned about anything. We are blameless. There is no spots and there are no wrinkles. He ironed everything out with the blood of Jesus Christ. He washed us with the blood of Jesus Christ from the top of our head to the soles of our feet. We stand before him holy and blameless and righteous tonight in him. In him we live and move and have our being. In him. In him. Shalom Hallelujah. You are blameless tonight. So you can't blame me for anything. And if you try to blame me for something, I'm blameless. He took care of that. He took care of you. Look at your neighbor and say, you're holy. You know that? When we talk about holiness, we're not talking about how people dress. We're talking about position. We're talking about position. Holy. Holy. You read in Revelation, the angels, legions, are going around the throne saying, Holy. Holy. Now, I'm getting ready to spark you a little bit here. You ready for a spark? You know, I always thought about that, just giving God and the Son glory, glory. But did you know, remember, we are seated at the right hand side of the Father? We are included when the angels go around the throne. Holy, 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 holy. Not only the Lamb of God, but you and I are seated together in heavenly place. Sitting there, blameless. Not because of our own goodness. Not because of our own righteousness. Not because of our own deeds. But because of Him, praise God. We have a right to enter right into the Holy of Holies. Hallelujah. The veil has been rent. The veil has been torn down, praise God. And you and I have not been separated from the Father. As we once were. But thank God we're right there with him. <laughs> we have the same presence as the Father has. We have the same presence as the Son has. Because he's in us. You have the presence of God by the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you. You need to identify with the glory and the holiness and the righteousness and the blameless that's living on the inside. Hallelujah. We have been perfected. We have been already qualified. Hallelujah. Not just for the kingdom, but everything God promises in his word. We're not trying to get the promises. The promises already been pre-qualified for you and I. All we've got to do is just reach out and say, pass the potatoes. Pass the fried chicken. Give me a couple of those homemade biscuits over there. And pass the gravy. Or you might say, well, give me one of those T-bone steaks over there, <laughs> a filet beyond, a, a baked potato, sweet potato, whatever. You're sitting at the table. All you had is a patient pass it to me because I'm sitting at the table of the Father. Where everything has been provided. All we have to do is sit down and partake of what he's provided. Are you li listening to me tonight? I said, are you listening to me tonight? You will never be more ready. You'll never be more ready for your inheritance than the moment you receive Christ 
as Lord and Savior. The only thing that holds it back is understanding your position. Understanding who we are. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We don't brag on ourselves. We brag on the greater one that lives in us. No longer I, Paul says. No longer I that lives. But Christ, by faith, Christ lives in me. By faith. Now faith is a substance. The substance, the material. The substance, God's give us substance, prosperity, healing, all of his substance, all of his promises has been given to you and I. Amen. Now faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. But now here's the, here's the kicker. We see it now because we see who we are. You can't see who he is until you see who he is in us. And once you see who he is in us, then we can see who he is. You need to chew on that a little bit. Because once you get that light going off on the inside, everything begins to change. I identify with all the goodness that he is, all the righteousness that he is. Amen. Because he's alive, I'm alive. When he raised up, identify with his death, burial, and his resurrection. Amen. Glory to God. Yes, Can't you just see us now? Yes. Sitting there at the right hand side of the Father with Jesus and the Father and the angels are going around. Holy, holy, holy. Amen. We're included in that. Amen. We've been positioned. We are in position. We've been placed in a position that nobody on earth has like a child of God that believes in the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Stand up and give them a praise right now. We are anointed. Not going to be anointed. I am anointed. The anointed one lives on the inside of me. I have the anointing of God living in me. And the anointing removes every burden yes. and destroys every yoke. Yes. And you have that anointing in you, yes. Christ in you. So you never have to say this again. I wish Christ would come down and help me out. <laughs> well, see, he can't come down because he's already come down. So as long as we see him off distance, we could never walk into the fullness of who he is in us. Amen. Yes. Once we... Once we grab the tape to that, I think we'd be more cautious of where we find ourselves, who we fellowship with, who we're walking with, who we're talking with, who we're hanging out with, what movies we see on TV or movie theaters or wherever. I know you can't go anywhere in this life without some language. I understand that. You can't just avoid the whole world. But you don't have to keep adapting yourself to hear more of it, more of it, more of it. When it's, when it's unnecessary. When it's unnecessary. Amen. Amen. Praise God. God is good. Oh. Hallelujah. Well, did you get anything out of that? Yes. Well, lift your hands and praise Him right now. Lift your hands and praise Him. Thank you, Father. We love you. We praise you. We magnify the wonderful name of Jesus. You're more than enough. You are a provider. You are the El Shaddai, the all-sufficient one, the all-breasted one. Thank you, Lord. We worship you and glorify you tonight. Hallelujah. If you know you're born again, raise your hand right now. Say, I thank God I'm born again. I'm a new creature in Christ. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. Amen. Take your hand down. If you are not born again, or if you're a backslider, Pastor Phil wants to pray for you before you leave. Anyone, anywhere? Anyone, anywhere? Aren't you thankful tonight that the Lord says that when you ask him to forgive you, 
he can never remember your sins again. Isn't that awesome? That is so incredible. That's why we can stand in the holiness and the righteousness of God because of his mercy and his love and his forgiveness for us. Amen. Amen. Lord, bless your people continually. Lord, as they travel tonight, throughout the day, throughout the week, they have the favor of God upon their life. Lord, we know that every need is met in their life more than enough. They're prospering in every area of their life. They're believing God for jobs, better jobs, increase in salary, whatever, God. It's already taken care of. We just want to thank you for it right now, Father. We thank you for increase. We thank you for your blessings. <laughs> we thank you for your healing and the power and the anointing of God on our lives tonight. No weapon formed against them shall prosper. They are blessed and protected by the blood of the Lamb. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said amen. 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 Greet someone, love someone before you leave tonight.